what if our environment became so bad that the wildlife uh, didn't want to live anymore? It felt appropriate to apply that question to ourselves um, as individuals and as a species, just questions about self-destruction and, and the ways that we deal with that. Land Mammals and Sea Creatures is about a woman who returns home to take care of her father, who has been suffering from PTSD for decades and whose own health is failing. And at the same time, there's this secondary storyline of the wildlife in the town committing suicide. So when I started thinking about the idea of self-destruction, uh, I started thinking about the, the people that suffer from that the most. And there's sort of this romanticized version of self-destruction that you see in pop culture and in media. And then there's this very real version that's experienced by ordinary people. The most challenging part to write for this book, I think, was trying to marry the fantastical with the realistic. Uh, the two storylines didn't always coexist very naturally, so it took some effort to try to get them to, uh, to fit naturally while still remaining in their own space, in their own worlds. I hope that readers take away from this book that uh, not only is it important to preserve life, both as individuals and as a species, uh, but also to preserve the quality of life and that it isn't as worthwhile doing the first unless we also do the second. The list of events that could disrupt a calm day had shape-shifted since she was last home in Port Braid. Once again, the rules had to be relearned. Marty's triggers developed like allergies. Some were long-term, bird bangers, air breaks, metal tinge smoke, and others came and went in a matter of years. The smell of Julie's hair straightener, the rattle of Boggle.